let's move forward. Goodness, that time goes fast. I promised that I was going to give you an example where I didn't do the drawing for you because that is a lot of the legwork and a lot of you guys, um, the, the graphing is the part that you struggle with. So this time I'm gonna give you a good few minutes to have a go at this and then what I'd like you to do is um, for part A, you can see, um, it's just kind of like a, it's a scaffold is what we teachers call it. So I'm kind of gently kind of guiding you into the question. Part A will help you with part B. Um, I'm gonna let you work out how exactly. Part B, it says find the area. So this is the, the classic kind of question we've been looking at so far. What I'd like you to do is um, go through part A, do that. And then in part B, give us a thumbs up once you have completed the sketch. Um, you don't have to comp have completed the answer, but once you have a sketch, even if it's wrong, that's okay. Um, I'll, I'm gonna step in at that point when enough of you are at that point and show you what the graph is supposed to look like just in case some of you are on the wrong track and I can help you out. So part A, your um, you're being given two graphs and you're going to find a point of intersection. I'm kind of giving you a hand there to work it out. And then in part B, go through the same SIC that we've been talking about before. Sketch, identify those integrals, and then, um, thank you Mrs. Lees, and then have a go at um, doing the com combination and conclusion. So give us a thumbs up um, or go ahead and say yes on the form. Um, actually, when, when you've gone past just part A, I actually would love you to have a sketch as well because I know that part's gonna take some time. So have a go. I don't know if you can edit forms. Can you edit forms, Mrs. Lees? <laughs> um, I'll give you guys a few minutes to do that. Thank you, that's amazing. All right, so off you go. Come back together in a few. Okay, so just, um, just judging on uh, where everyone is voting on the forms, if you have accurately reported. Um, there's a number of you who have got part A, which is great. Um, I'm showing you my working for part A here because I don't want you to get too hung up on it. Um, I will admit, it's not the kind of question that you normally uh, get given. So you might look at it and think, I'm not, I think I can do this, but I'm not sure how to approach it. So that's why I'm gonna show you this working here. To be honest, it's actually just a way to help you out in part B in working out um, the X value that's going to be relevant to us. You know, as you saw in the first example we did today, you need a point of intersection. So here is one which is very similar to that. We're gonna need a point of intersection and part A was just kind of an underhanded way to help you out. If you have not done with part A, I want you to move forward and start having a go at part B. And you can use my working for part A, which I'll leave on the screen for a little bit. Um, have a go at thinking about what these two curves look like and how they interact with each other, especially when you know this extra piece of information that I've just provided to you about where they both pass through. So when, as you can see, a graph gets given to you, that takes a lot of legwork out of the understanding of the question. And um, frequently we will do that because we're nice, but often you really do have to do the work, particularly as you get further and further into the course. Um, by the end of this you know, entire thing, you're gonna be able to know all of the things that you've um, been taught in this course. And so we're gonna expect you to combine them in all kinds of different ways. So this is us calling on your knowledge of you know, uh, parabolas of sketching all different kinds of functions, coordinate geometry to combine that. And then the integration comes in to sort of tie that all up in a neat bow. So I'll give you a few more minutes um, to have a go at that. And I'm looking for some people to say, yes, we've got a graph um, or otherwise to say, I'm completely out at sea. I don't know what to do here. Please help me, uh, please rescue me from this. Okay, so I'll leave my working for part A there and then we, uh, we're gonna move on shortly. All right, so it's starting to break down like 50-50 between the yeses and the noes. So I'm eyeing the time, and um, I think I'm gonna have a go at showing you what this thing is going to look like, okay? Now what I'll do is, I'm just going to copy down uh, this part of the question so that you can see it when I scroll. So, the uh, particularly important things that we're looking for are this curve here, and let's choose green, shall we? This curve over here. All right, so these are the ones we're going to focus on. Now, for starters, um, you've got y equals one minus x cubed. Now, what's that going to look like? Well, if I draw myself a very rough set of co coordinate axes here, whoop, okay, there we go. I'm gonna draw it in red so that you can tell that that's the cubic curve that we're interested in. Um, there are, firstly, the things to start with is that it's a cubic curve, so I know roughly speaking, you don't have to draw this, this is the rough shape of a cubic curve, that's not very beautiful, but you get the idea. Um, you can see that there's also a minus sign at the front of the x cubed, so it's actually going to 
go around the other way. It's going to be decreasing rather than increasing. And if this is unfamiliar to you, then um, relax. Next week, we're going to go into further work on graphing. And if this is unfamiliar with you, we will work back on that. Um, and then lastly, you can see this, this one out the front, which has the effect of raising it up one unit. Okay, so I'm going to be graphing something like this raised up one. There's the first thing. The second thing is, let's have a go at this guy over here. Now, um, I want to do some simplification of this. So I'm going to take out a factor of two, which is what Max was alluding to before. Uh, this is what I get from the factorization of two. And then I'm going to factorize further by noticing that this is a quadratic. It's actually a perfect square. So I can write this as x plus two all squared. Okay, so now let's have a go at trying to plot this on here. I'm going to put negative one, negative two, because I can see I've got an x-intercept of negative two. And then I'm going to very roughly, again, this is just for the purposes of illustration, so it doesn't have to be beautiful. I'm going to roughly draw my parabola here. There we go. Like I said, not beautiful, but it does the job for me. Okay, now what do I know about this parabola? Well, I know there's an x-intercept there, and I also know a y-intercept. You can find that out if you put in x equals zero to my green graph, okay? Now with my red, I'm going to piece together um, the other piece, right? So this is the cubic graph. So I noticed that from this point up here again, there's a y-intercept of one. So let me get a rough scale here. There's a four, that's gonna be half two. There's one, so I'm gonna put that intercept right there. I also know that I've got a point of intersection from part A, do you remember that? Um, I have a point of intersection at negative one comma two, so that's gonna be here, okay? It's a bit fat, you get the idea. Actually, no, it's a bit lower, sorry about that. It's gonna be more like there, that's better, okay? So I'm going to thread together these parts of the graph like so. Mm, yeah, I'm happy with that. That'll do me, okay? So I've got now the two graphs together and I've been asked to find the area that's bounded between the red graph, the green graph, and the x-axis. So you can see the relevant part in here, I'm going to draw across the bottom. So I hope you can see, let me uh, put in maybe yellow underneath there, okay? This shaded area, this little thin section, this is the area that I'm interested in. Okay, so sketch is done. How can I identify the appropriate integrals? Well, I need some x values, right? I can see that there's gonna be the part that's underneath the green graph and the part that's underneath the red graph. So let's have a look over here on the left-hand side. This portion here, which I'm highlighting in green, is entirely underneath the parabola. I know it starts at negative two. Can anyone tell me uh, where the uh, value is for negative one. Oh, sorry, Mariam, your question about one, that's actually, that's a bit sneaky. The, uh, the one that I've drawn in here is actually that point right there. It's just that I've kind of run out of space to put it, so I apologize for that. It's really referring to that cross where it goes through the axis. So um, that's a one, and this point above right here that's a two. So that's why you can see this is negative one comma two, which is kind of uh, me answering my own question. So I've got an x value there where I'm gonna stop looking underneath the, uh, the green graph, that's negative one, okay? So here's my first part, and if you want, you could name this as a one for area one. It's gonna be an integral underneath the parabola from negative two to negative one. And then I've got this other section, right? On the right-hand side, you can see the cubic takes over. This section I'm now highlighting in red has nothing to do with the parabola. In fact, I can just show you and delete the parabola out of there. You can see the red region is sitting entirely underneath the cubic curve. So I'll put the parabola back because I do want it. So I need to integrate under one minus x cubed. I know my start point is negative one, but I don't know my end point over here. What's that going to be? How do I find this x-intercept? Think back to how we did this before. How do I find the x-intercept to get that red value? Any takers? Okay, fantastic. Yeah, y equals zero into the cube. Well done, Yana, for being first in. So my cubic, after all, is, and I should have labeled this on the graph, which was a bit cheeky of me. It's one minus x cubed. So when I go ahead and solve for y equals zero, I'm gonna get, uh, let's put it underneath here, uh, one minus x cubed equals zero. 
I'm gonna add x cubed to both sides, excuse me that, and there's only a single value that does that, which is x equals one. So that's what gives me this value in here. So now I've got a start and end for this second area in here, which I'll call A2. So um, I'm ready to go. I have sketched, that took some time. I have identified the integrals. Now all that's left is to actually write them. So let me put this aside so I have a little bit of space over here. This was how I worked out that value. So uh, A1 is going to be equal to the integral from negative two to negative one underneath the parabola, which I think we said was two x squared plus eight x plus eight with respect to x. And then I'm gonna get a two, which is the integral, takes over from negative one and carries all the way through to positive one. So negative one to one, a one minus x cubed dx, okay? 